Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wall Street. And thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Our first prelude song is going to be Down to the River to Pray. This was made popular by Alison Kroos uh, from the hit movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The words will be on the screen. next song is Green Pastures, and this is a modern uh, twist on the, the 23rd Psalm.
Pastor Kim. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Psalm 84 reads, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. We come and gather here this morning in God's house, this place where the sparrows find a home and a nest, or in our case, the bats find a home <laughs> and a nest. And as the Hebrew turn of phrase would go, if even they could find a home and feel at home in this place, how much more does God want you to know that you belong and that this is your home here in God's house? So let us be filled with praise this morning. Let us f fill this house, God's house, with praise and thanksgiving. Let's stand and sing. Our opening hymn is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Uh, Chris Tomlin, who wrote, uh, he added to this song, the original one from John Newton, and he said uh, what he wanted, he started thinking about where John Newton had come from and the slave ships and that what God had done in his life. And he said that we're all made slaves to sin in our life, but God has set us free, and he's ransomed us from our slavery. And he wanted to uh, add uh, to this song and bring some freshness to it. So, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was
Let us pray. Holy God, draw near to us and open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds, open our lives to you, O God, so that we might sense your presence, so that we might be enlivened. Bring us all that we need today to worship you. Remove anything that prevents us from worshiping you. Help us to lay down our fears, our concerns, all that blocks the path from you. Bring us your healing, bring us your forgiveness, bring us your life, we pray. And let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And have a seat. just want to warmly welcome everyone to uh, this very special service of worship this morning. I'm Pastor Kim, and on behalf of myself and Pastor Dave, who is here but hiding, <laughs> helping out in the praise team, so that's awesome, and Pastor Stewart, we just, uh, it's, it's great to have you here worshiping with us this morning. Um, normally, I'd invite you back to coffee, but we're not having coffee today. Uh, instead, uh, far more fun. We're going to have a fire drill <laughs> at the end of the service. Now, Colonel Hersey's going to tell us a bit more about that a little later, just so you know what's going on. Um, but I want you to feel welcomed, even though you might feel slightly hurried out the door at the end of the service. Uh, it's great to have you here. Today, it, we are celebrating Holy Communion, and as is our tradition, we always uh, give you a chance to give to the Benevolent Fund on Communion Day Sundays. The Benevolent Fund is the fund that we use to help those who have emergency assistance needs. Usually we help out with uh, a voucher for the Metro to, to provide a little bit of food to help tide people over to the end of the month. So if you are able to give to the Benevolent Fund, I encourage you to do so. The Our Kenyan Kids Yard Sale. I'm going to invite Linda James up to do that announcement. Here she comes. Can that mic be turned on, Patricia? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, as always, the Kenyan Kids Garage Sale has been a wonderful success. I want to talk to all the people who contributed, all the people who volunteered, all the people who fed the volunteers, um, everybody that came and shopped. Um, we have a total of $6,962.80. Which is, it's so exciting, but I'm greedy. $6,962. Kim has dismissed everybody after the fire drill. But please come back. We still have a few things down in the gym. We still have some wonderful baking. We're so close to 7,000. Will you come back and, and help the total to get there? Because all of this is going to do so much good for all the projects of our Kenyan kids. I am so grateful and so thankful to everybody that contributed in every way. So thank you very much. But please come back. <laughs> And of course, our biggest thanks goes to St. Linda of the Chaos, <laughs> who every year performs the miracle of creating order out of chaos. And I know so many of you, I don't know, I think, Paul, you deserve a medal. I don't think I came into the church last week when you weren't there, and uh, a number of you as well. It's just an awesome, awesome thing. Tonight, uh, King at Celebrate Life, and uh, her title is The Formula to Healing. So... You want to know the formula? Come on out tonight. 
Um, we had a wonderful event on the courthouse green on Wednesday celebrating our 90th, the United Church of Canada's 90th anniversary, and uh, it was great for all of you who came out. It was wonderful to have the Presbyterian Church playing their bells for us, and lovely that the Recorder and Times gave us front page on that. That was kind of fun, too. Our annual congregational meeting is next Sunday, immediately following the service. We promise we will have coffee that Sunday, and maybe goodies, too. I'm not sure about that. Hopefully. Yes. Someone says yes? Anyway. <laughs> I want to give a special thanks to our media volunteers, to Kalantra Tian and Patricia Connolly. I know that this is Kalantra's last Sunday. She heads back to China soon. Um, she, you were... We don't notice the booth unless things go wrong, which is hard on booth people, but uh, it, it's just been awesome having you here just about every single Sunday helping out in the booth. And thank you to you, Patricia, as well, for your faithfulness. <laughs> And while we're cheering and praising, um, uh, if you get a chance to see John Farrell, I don't think he's here today. He celebrated 90-something 90, 90 yesterday, and I know Vera Black is celebrating her 95th birthday, and she's got a, there's an open house tomorrow at the Wedgwood from 2 to 4 that was advertised in the newspaper, so if you're available, do come and uh, wish uh, Vera a happy birthday. And if anybody else is celebrating a birthday in the last week or the next week, happy birthday and God bless you. Bob, I think uh, you're on. Happy announcements. And necessary announcement. <laughs> oh, you've got to use a mic. Yeah, is that better? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to complicate your life, but we do every once in a while, for the safety of everyone, have to have a fire drill, and uh, we, we've chosen today. So later on in the service, you will hear a fire alarm ring. When it rings, of course, you must evacuate. Remember our system, keep it simple, stupid, you know, right quarters. If you're in that quarter, that's the door you go out. Everybody aware of that, which door you're in, about halfway up, over here, out that door. That way. Yeah. I can see you moving now. <laughs> um, we are not going to uh, exercise the wheelchair members uh, in, in our drill today, so just the wheelchair members, just please come down to Annex, uh, Exit B here and wait until the f uh, fire alarm is over. Um, we cannot use the elevator, as it would it would uh, uh, be a false fire drill if you start using the elevator. Uh, everyone, the other difference we make in our fire drill, you know if it was a real fire drill, everybody would go out their exit and gather on the courthouse green. We're not going to do that either. But what we want you to do is just go out, and I was going to say go home, but then Linda will shoot me. <laughs> uh, what, what I'm going to say is go out there and linger a bit, when the fire alarm goes off, you can come back in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I guess I want to add to that, if you have significant mobility issues and difficulties with stairs, then perhaps come to this door for now as well, because we don't want you risking going down the stairs if that's very difficult for you. Uh, and. Uh, the kids are staying in church today. We're having an intergenerational service. But if this was a normal Sunday, parents are reminded, well, I think I'm just about, well, there's Laurel. Uh, parents are reminded not to go and get your children, but that the Sunday school teachers will take them to the green on a normal event. Um, let's stand and uh, have a holy buzz. Say hello to the person next to you. Our next song will be uh, How Great the Father's Love for Us. Uh, Stuart Townsend said, from the beginning he knew he was going to write a hymn. He said he had written many contemporary songs, but he felt that his next song should be a hymn. Uh, he said the melody came to him right away, but it took some time to tweak the words and uh, rework the lyrics. And he said that uh, today it's not, 
it goes against the grain to write hymns in modern songwriting. And he said, as a matter of fact, he was at a conference and a couple was not only surprised that he had written such a beautiful old-fashioned hymn, but that he was still alive. So, <laughs> so please join us in uh, singing. Okay. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. This morning reading is from John chapter 10, verse 11 to 18, the New International Version. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. In these readings, we hear God's voice. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I guess that's my cue. All right. Uh, have we got any kids today? It looks like we're really low on kids. We have kids. Oh, oh, you got two. You got three. You want to join us, Bryson? Oh, you want to sit right over there? 
Oh, there's another one or two. Now, this is, this is going to be a longer children's time, so if you're more comfortable sitting in a pew, you can do that. You know, it's going to be a little bit longer. Now, I, I, I want to tell you a little bit about what I've learned. <laughs> this is Communion Sunday. You see the stuff on the table? It's the big, not a mug, not a glass, pitcher, cup. And then there's the chalice. Yeah, that's the fancy word, chalice. And then there's the little pieces of bread. I want to talk about that. Now, the most important thing that I ever learned about communion, I learned from my son. Now, this is what I brag, my bragging time. When, when, when James was that big, yeah, just about the size of Ella, he taught me a very important lesson. Now, I guess I can get you to sit down now. I'm going to embarrass you. No, no, you can go back and sit over there. Now, I have to tell you about James when he was about that high. Um, in those days, in the old days, when you went to church, you, you wore your little suit. You had your, your gray flannel pants. You didn't wear blue jeans. You had your gray flannel pants and you had your little jacket. Now, he had a friend named Philip. You know Philip. And, and the two of them would always sit in, in the front pew, front seat, because nobody sat in the front seat then. They always start about three or four seats back. I guess they couldn't stand the goodness up here. <laughs> and and, and in, this ch in this church, there was, a, there was a little wall across, and the front pew was as long as two seats put together. And the thing was, that seat was so smooth and slippery. And when you sit on it with, with, with your, your little gray flannel pants, you can slide real easy. So, his mom, my wife and I, are up at the front getting ready to do the communion. No, no, that's another story. Philip and, 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 and James are sitting in that pew, and the service is just about ready to start, and they start going back and forth. And, and this is quite something to watch. And, and, of course, I can't get their eye because they're not looking at us. Now, Philip's mom and dad, they, they were the caretaker and they sang in the choir, so they couldn't get the Philip's eye either. So here's these two little boys. But then it happened. One was at one end and one was at the other end. Oh, they hit their heads and they just went down. A few weeks later, it was Communion Sunday, and sure enough, James and Philip are in the front pew, and they see the stuff on the table, and they decide they want to see what's going on, because in those days in church, you didn't stay in. You always went out to Sunday school, and the little kids didn't get to take part in the communion, which we do now here. So, what do you do? Well, they hid. The uh, story time came, and I didn't notice that they weren't there. They all came, the kids came to the front. The two of them hid under the pew. All the kids went out for Sunday school. We sang another song or two. The elders came up to the front, and all of a sudden the two little heads rose up. <laughs> now, I can't do anything about it. We're busy at the front, and so is Philip's mom and dad, two of them sitting there with these grins on their face. Now, because they're in church, the elders that are serving the communion think they're supposed to have communion, which is not really the custom then. In any case, the elder came along with the bread, and there they were, and the two little guys each took a piece of bread, and a little later, they came around with the wine, the two little guys each, so they had communion. Only kids in the whole church. Afterwards, 
Lily Jean and I thought, we better talk to them about it. So I sat them down and I asked them questions about the communion. And then I asked the big question, how did it make you feel? And James said, it felt like I belonged. Wow! That stuck with me. And then I began to understand what that's all about. I really understood. They say from the, from the, the word, from the mouth of a child, we learn. Well, he taught me my biggest lesson about communion and God that day. Really good. Really good. We belong. That's what that's all about. We belong. Now, I want to tell you a Ralph the Dog story. I've told you Ralph the Dog stories before, haven't I? Yes, I have. That's okay. That's Ralph the Dog. Oh, that way. I'll hold it real still. Mm -hmm. Ralph the Dog came to live with us. Oh, Quite a long time ago. He's in heaven now. All dogs go to heaven, by the way. Mm -hmm. When Ralph came to live with us, it was a new house, and it was kind of strange, and he was a little worried and upset often. But you know what we did? We just loved him up. We loved him, and we loved him, and then he felt like at home. You got it. And he felt like he belonged. But the big thing came a week before Christmas. I, some of you have heard this, too bad. Uh, I uh, decided that, that Ralphie needed a Christmas present. So a week before Christmas, I went to the pet store and I had got him a new collar, something like this one. And, and I brought it home, and he greeted me at the door, and, 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 and he curled up on, on, on the floor, and I went over and sat down, and I was telling my wife, Lily Jean, about the new collar I got for, for Ralphie, and, and she wanted to see it, so I took it out of the bag. And the moment I took it out of the bag, Ralphie sat up, and his ears went up, and he ran across the room, and he stuck out his neck across my lap. I couldn't believe it. He really did. He stuck out his neck and he wanted me to put the new collar on him. You believe that? It's true. It's true. It was the, it was the most wonderful little thing. So I, 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 I opened it up and put it around his, his fuzzy neck. He was so proud. You could see it. His tail gone. And then he walked over to Lily Jean, stuck out his neck so that she could admire it. <laughs> well, then I put the little, the little tags on it. It was an interesting thing that, that, that Ralphie should understand that wearing a collar meant that he, what's the word, belonged. He understood that. And of course, right away, I had to put his tags on. You know, and I always felt, but I couldn't say for sure, but I always felt that he liked the sound of the jingles because it reminded him of the fact that he belonged. Dog tags. Now, dog tags. We don't wear dog tags, right? We're not dogs. But we do wear God tags. You know what a God tag is? Cross. Okay, who's got who? Who's got a, a, a God tag on? You got one? That's a beautiful one. I don't know if we can see that in the camera. That's probably too small. You want to stand up and we'll try to show it? Where did you get that? Now stand up and look over there, straight over there. See up there? That's you. That's you. And right there is his brand new cross that his mom made. Yeah. That's really special. Hmm? I have mine on, but it's very much more plain. I don't know if you can see that one. 
My wife gave me this one. These are our dog no, no, God tags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not wrong being a dog. Yeah, okay, you can sit down again. When you have, a, I like to call it a, a God tag, when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling sad, you just hold it. If you're wearing it, yeah, you hold it. And it reminds you that you, what? Belong. You belong to God. You belong. It's very important. Also in here, I brought along my communion cup. This was the one that was given me to me when, when I first was made a minister. It's getting kind of tarnished now. It doesn't hold a shine very well. But that doesn't matter. And this is daily bread. Daily, you've been paying attention. <laughs> Just bread. Now, want a bite? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? No. Yeah? Want a bite? Well, the cup of wine and the bread is for me the hardest thing to understand about our whole Christian faith. Now, it, it, you, you know you don't have to have wine in, in the cup. You can have juice. And you know you don't even have to have juice. You could have milk and cookies. Or you could do the communion with coffee and donuts. Yeah. It's not the stuff. It's what you do and what it reminds you of. Remember, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Now, I had a question. How do you know you belong to God? How do you, this is a hard question. How do you know you belong to God? I'll give you the answer. You got the gut thrust? Yes, that's, that's a good hint. How do you know you belong to your mom and dad? How do you know you belong to your mom and dad? Hmm? That's a hard question. How do you know? I'll give you the answer. They love you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, well, of course. You know you belong because they love you. How do you know you belong to God? Because he loves us. It's kind of a round and round thing, isn't it? And I forgot the last part. Oh, I'm old. I'm old. Um, when James was very little, he taught me the important lesson about communion, and that is that we belong. And there's a lot of mystery that goes around with the communion. In a little while, we'll get to try and do the thing. But the important thing for you to remember is you belong. Just like you belong in your family, you belong with God. You're never alone. You're never lost. You never have to feel real, real, real sad because you belong. Okay. Let's say a prayer. Thank you, God, Thank you. that we belong, that we belong. To, you. to you. Thank you, God, Thank you, God. That, you love us. that you love us. We don't know why, we don't know why. but we know it's true. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You guys can go back and sit down where you were. No, you can't stay here. <laughs>
Our next song uh, was written by John B. Foley. It's called One Bread, One Body. And uh, he's written uh, quite a few uh, songs. His, uh, most of his uh, musical work was done with a group called the St. Louis Jesuits, who released uh, several musical albums, and I'm sure you can find them on iTunes. So One Bread, One Body. come forward, we are reminded today of how much God has given to us, how much God loves us, and how we belong. Let us respond in love. Let us respond with our offerings. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your tremendous love. We pray that you would open our hearts and our hands to give so that others might feel that powerful sense of belonging. Bless all that we give, O oh God. Transform it, use it for your purpose, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated.
Please join us in a response song, Give Thanks. This communion table that you see before you today does not belong to Wall Street United Church. It doesn't belong to the, our denomination, the United Church of Canada. This table belongs to Jesus. Anyone who wishes to come and be filled with this bread that gives life and this wine that quenches our deepest thirst and yearning is invited this morning to receive. Anyone who wishes to receive communion and experience Christ's presence here and now is invited to receive. For in the name of Christ, I invite you to share in the feast of the table. The wine that we are using is unfermented wine. It's grape juice. And today you'll be served communion by intinction. When you come forward, you'll be given a piece of, given one of the wafers, or gluten-free wafers, we have those too. And then you'll just take it to the next person who's holding the juice and just dip it in lightly and then eat it and return to your seats. The way we normally do it, if my memory is correct, is for those in the center sections, you'll come down the um, center aisle and then return up the aisles here to the side. Those in the um, outside sections will come down on the... Uh, outer aisles there and then return back up around the outside. One slight little difference this morning for those of you who are sitting in that section, um, we have a, a, a special uh, thing happening during the uh, communion and I just ask for you to wait until the family here on the left has received communion and Kim and I switch with this, the regular servers. Okay, and then you can come, come down at that time. Before we receive communion, we always take time to prepare our hearts and minds. Um, in the evening service, I always call this the time when we take out the garbage. Let's take a moment in silence to say sorry to God for the things that we've done that has hurt God, that has hurt a friend or a neighbor, or the things we've done that's hurt ourselves. Let us offer up our worries our pain and our hurt, whether we have received it or we have given it. Let us pray. We approach the cross of Jesus with our hands full of our burdens and pain, our regrets, our concerns, our sin. And we leave this at the foot of the cross for Jesus to carry. Now we stand at the empty tomb with empty hands. With these empty hands, we are invited to receive new life, the gifts of healing and love as we take communion. 
Amen. Let us affirm our faith as we say together the words of the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, life behind death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is good to give God our thanks and our praise. It is good to give God our thanks and our praise. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> God sent his son Jesus to show us that we are not forgotten and to heal us and to bring us into a closer relationship with God. Jesus brought us new life and he freed people from their pasts so that they could reach their full potential in the future. Jesus brought life most especially when he lost his own life on the cross. And though it seemed at the time that life would never come again, God raised Jesus back to life and in so doing brings new life to each one of us here today. Jesus lives. Let us be renewed through this act of holy communion. On the night before Jesus died, he gathered at a table with his close followers, sharing with them the Passover meal. And that night he took the bread, he gave thanks to God for it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you break bread, remember me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and offered it to his disciples, those people gathered around him that he had walked with, those people that would let him down, but those people that he knew would come through in the end. And he offered it to them, and he said, Take this and drink this cup, for this is my blood, which will be offered in forgiveness to you. It's a new covenant between you and between me. Each time that you do... Do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has child, died, Christ, Christ has risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. I'd like to acknowledge a special occasion this morning. As you know, and has been mentioned earlier, in the United Church, we don't set a minimum age that someone can first receive communion. Communion is open to all. But we have a young lad here today who's going to take part in communion for the first time. Where's Bryson? There's Bryson. Hi, Bryson. His name is Bryson Stuart Carl Froze LeBlanc. Do you want to come up and stand beside me? Sure. Come on up here. That's good. You're looking very handsome. <laughs> and he was baptized back here at Wall Street in 2007. And Bryson's been attending... Tell me if I pronounce this right. Roger Saint-Denis Catholic School? Very good. And he's been going through the preparations for receiving communion for the first time with his classmates. And this morning is his special day when he will receive it for the first time. With Bryson today, either in person or in spirit, are his parents, Jeanette and Carl LeBlanc, and his sister, Ella, all from Burt's Rapids, his great-grandfather, George Froze, from Belleville. His great-aunt, Joy Froze, from Nevada. His godmother, Alice Lau, from Toronto. His uncle and godfather, James Rombo Froze, from Oregon. His grandmother, Henriette Fafard, from Tracy, Quebec. His great-uncle and godfather, Rock Fafard, from Sorel, Quebec. And, of course, his grandparents, Pastor Stuart Froze and Lily Jean Rombo Froze. 
who we all know very well as part of our family. Please welcome Bryson and his family this morning. You can go back and sit with your hips. To invite those who are helping with communion to come forward as our time of communion begins.
let us pray together the prayer on the screen after communion. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, for the life we have received, we thank you, God. May the sharing and receiving of these gifts remain always in our hearts, and may these gifts fill us with life so that we are able to share our faith in words and in actions of love. Amen. And let us continue to pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this special day, for this communion. We thank you especially for Bryson. We thank you for his family, for those who were able to be here and those who are here in spirit. We ask your blessings on Bryson and on his family, we pray. We touch our hearts, we pray. Fill us with your life, and most especially, Lord Jesus, we pray that we would know deep in our hearts that we belong, that we belong to you. This we ask in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us go from this place knowing that we belong. We belong to Christ. We are the body of Christ. And so let us take from this church that feeling of belonging and the life we have received at the table. Let us take it from this place and offer it to a broken world. Offer it to neighbors and loved ones family, and strangers. And may the blessings of God, the source of love, of Christ Jesus, the love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit loves power go with you this day and forevermore. And now let's stand and sing our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. 